What's good, Bully World? This is Zeb, your host of Bully Talk with Zeb Pitts. Today, my special guest is Justin Crawford, the CEO of Admiral Club Exotics, man. What's good, big dog? Appreciate you having me on here, man. How you doing tonight? How you doing? Man, I'm doing good, man. I'm glad, glad you came on, man. No problem. I know you've been trying to get me. I had went to Mexico and the time just was off, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad we can finally get it, get it knocked out for sure. Man, let's jump into it, man. Where where you originally from? Uh, I was born in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, I lived in like Hickory Hills uh, for a little bit, and then my mom and dad split. I moved to a small town called Cleveland, Texas. It's a little outside of Fort Worth, and that was basically where I was raised, everything. And then from there, I moved to uh, Frisco, going to high school, and I've just been here ever since then. When when did you uh, get the love for dogs, man? Uh, I think it was from day one, man. I used to find me and my brother used to go out and find stray dogs. If we saw a stray dog, we house no no matter fleas. We wasn't we weren't thinking about that. So I mean, at age day one, I think you know what I'm saying I always had the love for animals, not just dogs but animals. You know? So it was day one for sure. When did you uh, take the dog seriously? Um, I had gotten a little bit of a trouble, um, a little, a little bit of legal trouble, um, my early twenties. And so like I had caught a felony charge, um, and I had to take some, I had to, from there, from there, I had to get, do something serious. So I was like, what can I do? I was working a few jobs. I worked Blaze Pizza. I worked at Pet Supermarket for a little bit. Um, and that just wasn't for me, man. I was just trying to find my way. And I just finally was like, I took my last 20 thousand I had and I just bought dog bought my French French bulldogs and just stayed down. It took years. It took years for me to even get the twenty back, but I just stayed down and took start taking it serious from that point, you know, when I had caught gotten a little bit of trouble or whatever. You know, you know, speaking on that what you were just talking about, because you had put a post out uh, you know, speaking on that. Why why was that important to you to to let others know about what you had went through and, and what you overcame man i really i really did that because it's uh, it's a lot of people like that in the dog game they just scared to speak on it because they don't want to judge them and i me personally i um i felt as though i needed to because it was gonna be who was gonna say something you know i didn't want nobody somebody's gonna try to use it in a negative way like once i got at a certain level and i ain't want them to ever try to use it against me so I put it out there. I me knowing, I want people to know, like, hey, this what happened. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I learned from it. I'm a whole different person. Like you say, it's a lot of kids out there that, and, and older people that I that message me every day and say I inspire them and stuff like that. So people can see, like, you can change your life around the end of the world. You know what I'm saying? Like, it might seem like that at that time, but you can like you can change your life like one positive thing. So. I mean, that's really the main reason I posted it, just so people can see and be like, hey, man, it, you know, it wasn't always peaches and cream. Like, you know, I had to make it out the struggle for real, for real. How, how how hard was that for you at the time? Because like you said, you were very frustrated at what you were going through at the time on the job. And, and you decided, man, to just bet on yourself. During that time, I can imagine it was a lot, a lot of, uh, a lot of soul searching going on. I'm gonna be real. It was hard because my 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 woman, like she, like man, like you know, I took my like when I said I took my last twenty thousand, I took thousand and spent it on dollars. So she, like man, like you know, it take a while for you to even be able to make do any make even even draw even on the dollars because like you buy a puppy, you gotta wait a year plus for it to even do anything. So like, she it didn't make sense to her. You know, it never makes. So I had to hear her too. So that was real difficult, you know. Like she's like, man, you spent the twenty thousand on, it. you know, your twenty last twenty thousand on the dogs. Like you could be doing something else, but she didn't understand it. But you know, she stayed down with me, believed, and she see now like it, it pays off, you know. So, but it, for many years, it, years it didn't make sense. Like it made sense to me, but it didn't make sense to her, you know, because it wasn't you know making any money or anything like that. It was just costing me money, but. I knew, you know what I'm saying? I knew for sure. So, yeah, you know, was you know, speaking on that, Justin, what, what's the biggest lessons that you've learned so far, you know, being involved with this dog game? 
Mm, the biggest lessons, man, I, I would say pay. Um, because sometimes like these dogs, so you gotta you gotta be patient with them because they can. So one dog might you might not think it might be something, but it can grow to be something. So that's really having me patience and um just not letting nobody get in your ear just you know, you know staying focused you know it's gonna be a lot of stuff that comes like a a lot of different things that come and stuff like that i would say like the main thing i learned was just you know staying focused and having tunnel vision like not letting the outside people or people close to me you know what i'm saying get to me and like that so that, that's probably the main thing i've learned you know, you were speaking on it earlier, taking your last twenty thousand and really jumping all in. What, yeah. what's, what's, I hate that. man. I would ask you, man. What, what's the most expensive dog you ever bought, man? Man, the most expensive dog I bought for sure. It was a Maui daughter, and I would just say I paid over eighty thousand for her for sure. But, but she's a fluffy black and tan fluffy. Um, I bought her mom back too, also, but yeah, I, over eighty thousand. I say that. Wow, <laughs> what man? That's that's crazy. Did you ever think in your life, man, that you would spend that much money on a dog? Nah, I mean, I mean, earlier this year, I wouldn't have thought like that. I was gonna, you know, buy buy a dog for eighty thousand. Believe in my product in the Maui line that much that I know I needed her to to elevate it to an even higher. Level. so i know i invested back into my program you know like i don't want people thinking that i'm even scared to buy you know my own product i buy my own product back from people all the time like i sell a dog and i see them like man let me get that back so yeah that was it was it was, it was hard it was hard to do that but man it's a blessing to be able to do it i done worked hard up to a certain level so I, I could make choices like that and not have to lose sleep over and stuff like that. So it's a blessing. I'm very thankful for sure. You know, being involved with this business, man, you you know it could be a cutthroat business being involved with this bully game, man, because you got all types of walks of life being involved in this business. Mm -hmm. With that being said, uh, who do you look up to in this business? Uh, breeders I look up to. Um, I look up to Pitfall Kennels, James, that's over there. Uh, that's really the main... Um, that's really the main person that you look up to. Uh, it's a lot of other guys, but that's that's why if it's if I had to pick one person, it would be James from Pitfall Canada. That's my guy. He helped me a lot. He always on, oh, even though he was a big cap. He been selling dogs to celebrities, you know, and stuff like that. Like been producing quality dogs, and it never stopped him from picking up the phone whenever I needed help. Uh, I had a question and stuff like that. So that's my guy for him. Sure, James Pack, hit for Kennels. Now we gotta talk about your boy, man. That that you love so much, man. That boy Maui, man. How special was Maui, man? And when did you know he was special? Man, um, like I always, I produce a lot of, I, I, I produce a lot of litters, and I never kept a male. I never kept a male. I was always a my female. I was a female program, just females, and so. My goal was to produce the game moves so fast. So my goal was to only produce a blue tri merle, and I wasn't worried about the fluffy. I really didn't care too much about the fluffy. I knew about it a little bit, but it wasn't as big as it is now. So my goal was really just to produce that. So I produced the litter, um, and there was three puppies, and it was uh, two blue tri trendles, and then it was Maui. He was a blue tri. Merle, but they was all Merle's, and he just had the look from day one. And I was mm -hmm. like, man, this the one, you know, like, I never produced a dog like that. He smashed up. He's small. He just had the look, and he kept getting bigger, bigger. I guess he grew, but he was staying small, and I would just look at him. He just had the look. He had the stance. Like, he get it from his dad, and so he had the stance. And I just knew he was the one, man. And then I didn't DNA test him until um, he was Six months, everybody's like, hey, you DNA testing, you DNA test him. I didn't do it till I, like he was like six months, and that's when I found out he carried fluffy. And I still, the fluffy still wasn't, it still wasn't big like that, like it blew up to be. And it finally started blowing up. I started posting them, and it took off from there, man, for sure. 
When when actually did the fluffy uh Frenchie start really blowing up, man? Cause like right now it's like hotter than fire, like really hot right now. I mean, it was, they were around. It was one called like five, something like that. But in my eyes, when I got, I had bought a dog, a, a blue merle. I, I'm not a blue merle, but a blue fluffy. And her name is Junebug. And I, in my eyes, when I posted her, she blew up like to, like to this day. She still posted. She gets hundreds of thousands of likes, sixty thousand, eighty thousand. 120, 120,000, like on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, she still gets posted to this day. And one, like once I posted her, I feel like people that had them, they got more comfortable to post them because, like, they wasn't. I paid only 10,000 for her, you know. And like right now, if I was to sell that dog, I could sell it for like a hundred, you know, in the hundred thousands. And it, I just feel like everybody got comfortable posting their fluffies and then it, it went crazy there. But in my eyes, this when I, Cause I never really saw him like that. When I posted hers, when I started seeing him, like going crazy. But that's to me, like last year, early last year, something like that is, is it went kind of crazy. Now, now I, I meant to ask this earlier. When you uh, took your last twenty and got involved with the bully game, I mean with the dog game, what made you go to the Frenchies? I didn't. I, I didn't. I should have. I didn't go start with the Frenchies. I bought a. A little scrappy is a do you I don't know if you're familiar with a little scrappy in Dallas owned by Gustavo. Yeah. Um, he was like the hottest to me. He was the hottest. He was the hottest man. So um I bought a Brindle son off of him. And his name I, I named him Luca Brasi. And I had bought another bully. And uh I ended up trading the female bully for a Frenchie. And then I bought Frenchies from Pitfall Cannon. So I, I kind of started with I started with two bullies at first also. But I just the bullies wasn't. I, I was. I knew I wanted to start with the Frenchies. I just end up, you know, I got caught up in their wave because he was just, uh, Scrappy was hot. He was producing hot stuff, so I got caught up in that and ended up buying a son. And I ended up selling them to my brother and stuff like that. But I started off with bullies also. Man, I, I got to ask about this because this is crazy. I remember I was seeing you do a post about this, man. What does it mean, man, to have Maui kids? Getting like sixty plus lock ins before six months. Is that even even heard of before? Uh I, mean, I never heard I never seen it. I mean, I mean, I've never seen it. It seemed like this year is the year that that not just Maui kids, any of the young hot Frenchies, like they get locked in as puppies, man. But for Maui's son, his first son was GameStop. Uh shout out to Golden State Bullies and the Bay. Um they own him. Um, my boy Andrew Hamilton produced him. He's also on the Bay, but uh, man, he had got like he had got like sixty some lock ins or something. He he was not even six months old, and I'm looking like what the hell, like because Maui when I when I had Maui, I thought he would go, he was going crazy, and I had got like so many. So I seen him like what like, and then I had recently opened up um, Forest Hunk. He's a blue tribe, fluffy mountain. And the first day I got like 70 some lock ins. You know? So it's going crazy. Like the it's going crazy right now. It's a blessing for sure. It's like after how, like you know what before you answer that, how 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 nervous do you get with those 70 lock ins that, that oh, you can that you I'm can nervous, uh, nervous. even with Maui, that's a that, I'm not sure to say it. that's the main reason I closed Maui off because like you lose sleep because I'm I'm a I'm an honest person and I'm responsible but like you know you get that many lock ins with the dogs you have a lot of money you know so like if something happened with that dog like you know you gotta pay that back so it is it's nerve wracking to me maybe to not other people but to me I'd be like I I could I'd pay it back you know if someone was to have like still it's like man you know happened with these dogs. You know, Justin, can you explain that more for people, man, who think that it's easy to have a top stud out there, no matter what breed it is, man? It is stressful from what I hear people at the top, man. I don't say, you, you making money? Yeah, we making money. We making money. It's a blessing. I ain't complaining. I, I pray to God. I pray to God all the time. And I tell him, like, don't everything I'm complaining because I want more on my plate. It's just, you know what I'm saying? It is stressful. Like, like you have, say, you lock in so many people, you have a hundred thousand and just lock ins. That's just the front end. 
say your dog worst case your dog was to pass you have to pay that back so like if you're not a responsible person you blowing money which i don't do like you blowing the money and stuff like you can't pay these people and you see that all the time with these dogs they can't pay the people their money back and it's just stressful it's not even just that like you have some people like you might have days where it's three people use your dog that locked him in and or two people and you have to you know, refund money and help them figure out their backup plan, make sure they know ahead of time. And it, it can get stressful. It's like, because Maui, he's busy all through the week. So, like, it's just like, you got to be here. You're getting pulled everywhere. But it's a blessing. You know, it's stressful, but it's a blessing. You know, I had uh, someone did an actual testimony on you talking about that, how you helped him out at the last minute. I think when that's when you was down in Mexico and you helped him out. No, uh, I think I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I helped her out on something. Else. I was in Mexico when she made that post, but yeah, it, it, it was something else. Yeah, it, it, the Lord has blessed me, man. I I come from nothing. Um, so whenever I help somebody in, in any way I can, I'm for sure. I'm in, in, I'm gonna do it. Like I do. I try to give back in, in all the time. All the time, I try to give back. I do turkey drive. Um, if, it, if it's kids, like, going to school in my city, I, going to college, I try to help them out. Um, sometimes I help pay people's rent, utilities. Like, I help a lot of people under the table, like, behind scenes. Speak on. Like, it's a blessing for sure. I think God put me in position because he, he know I'm going to do the right thing. So. You know, I was going to speak on that, man. Uh, uh, also, uh, your involvement in the community, and you were actually speaking on that, man. How important are you to your community, man? Man, I I, I feel like I want to be a. I, I, I want to be like in, in my city, and I'm one. My city, look up, like look at me, like I'm. Just, I inspired a lot of people, a lot of my peers and kids I went to school with. Because from my city, like I can't name five people on my hand who had like their dads in their house. And most of our parents was on drugs like at a young age. So like we really didn't have much and we, we had to grind for we get. So like they see me and I made I came up out the mud and you know I'm doing better and stuff like that. I'm inspiring people. I don't talk down on people. I try to, you know, uplift people. Um my they, they I inspire my city. I, I just wanna bring the city back to how I'm trying to get it back to how it was when we was kids and you know, stuff like that. I bought a rental property. I'm trying to buy more in my city and stuff like that, trying to buy it back. So it's starting to come back. But, um, man, I, I just want to be great for my, you know, for my city and my community and let them know, like, hey, you can always reset and start over. It's never too late. You know what I'm saying? You can reset. Go from there. You know, speaking on the on on the different things that you're talking about as far as community involvement, what, what, what's your thoughts on someone – uh, I know we off topic, but someone like a, a Nipsey Hustle man and what he what he meant to his community. Man, he showed he showed them that he can do more. Like me, I love Nipsey man. I used to go to his concerts when he was years ago in Dallas and stuff like that. Like I want to be somebody like that. Like he he showed you it's more than just you know just the hood hood mentality and stuff like that. He opened up his store. He showed you to be a business owner like. I hate that he was taken away from us so so early because he had so much more to do and show us. But but for sure, like somebody like him is a, a person for sure. I look up to he like he brought the people like the like people like really looked up to him. It don't matter if they were thugs, they were hanging away, they still looked up to this man and because he they knew you know he was for the community, he was for the people, and it's just sad that he got taken away so early. But yeah, for sure, I look I like. Uh, Love Nipsey, man, and what he meant for his community. Yo, what's some of the things that, that that you would like to do next, man? Or you want to keep that under wraps right now? Uh, um, I speak on a little bit. Um, uh, trying to think how I could word it, but um, like I'm doing so much with the dogs. I'm not saying that I'm I'm getting bored with it. I'm because I'm gonna take it up. But now I feel like. My whole, I'm probably like at 37 percent. You know, I, I'm gonna be a hundred, but I'm, I'm gonna just say I'm working on corporate stuff. I'm on corporate dog stuff. I'm, like, you know, what I'm saying that's where I'm about to be. I'm gonna have my family members running the, you know, my other stuff, but I'm gonna be corporate. It's gonna be something else. So 
I'm working on some stuff for sure. What what made you stick to, with the Frenchies? They small. They, you know, you can, the bullies and English bull. I had English bulldogs out, so they like big dogs. Plus, they Frenchies are cool. They cool. They like humans, man, besides them farting and stuff like that, man. They gay. But they, they like humans, man. They funny. Like, you just got to have one, man. You you need to get one, man, for sure. Like, they just, they, they're dope dogs, man. I just love them. I don't like long muzzle dogs. I like how they, the short muzzle. Um, I just like them, man. They, it, you got to own a Frenchie, man. They just, they the dopest dogs in the world, for sure, to me. Like, I I wouldn't, I can't see myself having no other dog other than a French Bulldog, for sure. Yeah, I just heard you just say something. What 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 other dogs uh, are part of uh, Admiral Club Exotics? Um, I have English Bulldogs. I have a few of them, but I let my I let my cousins run that part of the that part of it. I don't really, uh, I'm not hands on with the English, but I do have English. I'm, I'm just English and French Bulldogs right now. I don't I'm no longer in the bullies. I've been seeing some dope stuff out there. I like the Busachi. Busachi line and stuff like that, but uh, right now I don't have any any bullies. Just English and French. You you know when you were uh, speaking uh, earlier about your boy Maui and how you you were really a female. You were thinking of more of your yard was a female yard until you got Maui. Did you ever think a dog like Maui would would change your life? Nah, I didn't think he was gonna change my life. I didn't think he was gonna change my life. And until he was probably about seven months. I had to go to um, Atlanta from that. And I was like, I could do that early on with Maui. You can ask. I used to put in uh, a lot of lead. Maui. Like, if he had breeds out of state, I, w- I was scared to ship him. And I was like, man, early on, I, was, man, I don't want it to get there and not be good. So I would actually drive to where these people needed it. So I was driving to different states. I was putting in a lot of work. And, um, it was a show in Georgia I went to and I drove because um, I was like, man, I got to go. I got to let these people see Maui. Like at that point, because I knew he was something like he had got locked in so much and uh, he was, he had a big name. So I was growing one, starting to grow one. So I drove. He actually almost died. In the show, man, like like a lot of people don't know that. Like I had him out there. I don't know if he was like thirsty or what, but like he started trying to throw up and he was about to choke. He like kept choking, but he wouldn't throw up. I had made him, I had had to make him throw up, but like, I thought I was gonna lose him at that show. But we ended up winning uh, best French, best Frenchie. My only goal was to go to the show and win that and go back to because that's why I told my boy like, I'm gonna drive down here from Texas to Georgia and win this award. And man, I had to wait all day because they took all day not to, to do that category, and they did it and I won. Man, I, from then it was over with. Nobody couldn't tell me nothing, so I had to. I was like, I'm gonna make them larger than life for sure, and that was my build my goal. Do you know you were speaking on something earlier also as well about the you know the whole fluffy phenomenon? How a lot of people at the time weren't didn't really want to post it. Do you feel you you uh, Admiral Club Exotics really helped bring uh, the fluffy Frenchie to the forefront? Um, I'm one of the people. I ain't gonna say I. Ain't, I ain't, I'm one of the people for sure. I ain't gonna say I'm the person who did it because now it's a lot of breeders. A lot of breeders way before me, um, because they've been had fluffies for years and stuff like that. But I feel like I I made it pop. I made it I, to my to my you know to the, my peers and people who follow me. They never really saw fluffy and stuff like. That. And so, I was one of the people for sure to make it. To I feel like to I kind of. I put I kind I kind of raise the value I feel like for us people might hate or whatever but like the stuff I do I'm always trying to up raise the value for the community so um, I feel like I was one of the people that raised the bar like hey this is what the fluffies you know this is what we can sell them for and stuff like that because it's people selling them for high money but it's people selling them for low for the low also so I feel like I was one of the people uh, responsible before that but I wasn't the main or the or part of the main group of people because it was they was there years before so I, I won't even ever take that credit 
Oh, definitely. But I but I'm just saying as far as like when we're talking about like the bully world itself, I really didn't see it until I actually saw oh. it on us. Look, look, I'm gonna go ahead and say because Daquan Jackson, man, look, he posted my fluffy and, and the way when he posted, he was like a wave or not or something, man. I feel like you know, I said he was trying to be funny, but when he posted it, if you look at the comments, people like, I'll be like them going for a lot, that's the wave. And so at that time, the bully community wasn't going for that, they kind of was like trying to joke and laugh at that, you know what I'm saying? Like, but now they know, they know because I see a lot of them. You and you probably do a lot of them they come into the Frenchies like it's like the bullies that come the bully world coming to the Frenchies but like at first the bully can like the bully community they wasn't having that but like the Frenchie lovers and stuff like that they a lot of them still don't like the fluffies it's like to me it's like maybe 60 40 you know, like yeah. some, some don't because I know on, on our coast over here on the on the, on the, on the, the east coast here only people like been involved with the bully community for a long time, like 20 years almost. Mm -hmm. Like here, you only only one I really saw like that who really was pushing it during that time was uh Holly Selassie HD bullies. Yeah, I know, yeah, I know who that is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for me, yeah, yeah I know exactly who you're talking about. Let me ask you, man, because you know, since we were talking about how, in my opinion, how you really brought it the fluffies about into into the bully world. Do you currently feel right now that you have Admiral Club Exotics has the best fluffies in the world right now? Or Frenchies, period. I don't have Frenchies. Maui's producing the best fluffies. Uh, I mean, it's a lot of dope fluffies out there. Um, I feel like I had it. I know I got the best structure ones for sure. Like you see all of them now from now. Um, but it's a lot of dope fluffies out there, man. It's a lot of dope ones. So I don't think I got the best. I got the best fluffies, man. I got the <laughs> I was about to say, man, go on to say your best man. fluffies, man. Like it's a lot of tall ones out there. I could break mine's out, you know. I can show you. That's how I'm gonna say that's how I'm gonna say I got the best fluffies. I always producing the best fluffies too. You know, uh, with uh, a lot of the big breeders, it doesn't matter uh if it's American bully, exotic or or, or whatever. They don't like to come out to shows. I, I can understand the reason because, like you said, like you almost could have lost Maui in the drive going to a doll show. Is that is that stressful as well? Because people want to see them in person, but at the same time, you got to you got to protect your investment. Yeah, I'm, I I don't think I can't I can't myself, uh, myself ever taking him to another show. Um. Oh yeah, and I and people like I've been invited to shows out of state, and I don't even want to put them on no plane because I've had people in the bull that had bullies before that I know people that's taking big studs on planes and they've died on the plane. So it's like, so yeah, I'm, I feel them with that. Like it's stupid. Like you making you have you have a six figure a dog that's making six figures. Like why would you you know it's it doesn't make any sense to bring too much that can happen in the show it's people that's hating they can poison your dog yeah i, I never bring them to another show you, you know when you were putting um admiral club exotics together what were some of the biggest mistakes uh that you made that you can think of and and, and how did you correct it my biggest mistakes i made was our last year one of my biggest mistakes was uh, I was buying double, so I was getting so excited. Like I'd have what I mean by that is that uh, I would have a dog already, like I say a lilac and tan that carries testable, and then I go out and buy like, the same type dog. So I was buying double, like I was doing that a lot last year, and then. Um, Really, just being patient, not selling dogs too fast, because I know a lot of times I sell a dog for for a certain price and then end up buying it back for twenty thousand from the person, you know. And so when I could have just wasted, I mean, waited and saved the money. So I, I think being patient that was my biggest biggest thing. You you know, speaking of patience, right? You was you put a post up earlier, you know, relating. The, the 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 situation with lock-ins at early age to 
crypto in the stock market. Like, don't complain about it. What once it go up, you had a chance to lock in early because you know that stock or that dog go that price is going to jump up. And that's how I do my studs. That's like how I like to start them off the low hundred. A lot of people don't agree with that. They hate it because they like you heard in the market, but hey, I, I, I'm doing it my way. Like you know, like I, it, it, you might think I'm hurting the market, but in my eyes, I'm market up. Like I don't, I don't like to like tax a lot. Like bust you upside your head first, and not even know what the dog can produce. So I like like a Maui. I started them off at fifteen hundred, and I, people locked him in, and then I raised them to three thousand and five thousand. Seven thousand. I closed them, so like, just like Forrest Hump, I let a few people do it at two thousand. Then I did it at three, and I did that five k. And a lot of people didn't like that, but hey, man, I'm just not one of the people like to try to to try to just start it off. Oh, I'm gonna start you off at ten thousand. The dog can't even. You don't even know if the dog gonna be able to produce like because these dogs are getting locked in so early, so you don't even know if they can produce semen yet. So. I like to do it like that, like the way I I started off low and then put it up, you know, the way I did Maui. So, you know, I I, I want to talk about your marketing strategy, man, because it's very unique, very different, man. You you do like for example, like the uh, the video that you did in front of your house, man. That that was unique, man. Oh yeah, and and, every, and that video, what was crazy is about about the video. That's not my, we. I flew to uh, L.A. to my. One of my oh, boys. oh, you flew out to LA for that house for sure. I wish it was my house, man. But uh, the concept, everything in the video is true. Um, as far as like what we talking about and stuff like that, um, I come up with stuff all the time, like crazy stuff. Like if I had a bigger team, I had a big team of people behind the scenes. But if I had a bigger team, man, I would come up. I'd have so much crazy stuff because I'm constantly thinking. Like, I'm watching TV, or if I'm just seeing her thinking I'm constantly ways to up the level and build it up to make it greater and greater and greater. And this second half of the year, um, they, we gonna, y'all gonna see that because the first half I kind of took like a mental break. Like I worked hard the last year, put in a lot of work and I just have to get my mental, you know, you know, my mental back right. So I have to reset and stuff like that. So I really didn't do too much this first half of the year as far as I like, and, and, Put, uh, put showing certain dogs and putting stuff out like I kind of saved it for the second half, so we're gonna turn it up for sure. How how did the uh, pandemic uh, affect uh, Admiral Club Exotics last year? We went up, we went up, we went up like like Bitcoin and Dodge did. We went up like we stock kept going up. We ain't never we have God is good. We haven't went down. So I don't know what it was if people were staying at home buying these dogs because they couldn't go to or what but the during that it, it helped us like it made us elevate for sure now I, I don't know if you know uh uh ife with the bullies he had yeah uh, yeah, yeah uh, it, it's y'all both are interested because y'all both do that stuff outside of the box marketing type thing like he uh is coming up with the app for riff raff the, the the little app that he's doing. oh yeah, yeah, yeah for sure yeah yeah, and I, I saw you doing something like the Pixar with uh with Bowie. I, I, oh, like, for I, sure. I wonder if he gonna try to turn that to like a little. Yeah, he, yeah, I know. I, I, I seen him before some of the stuff he's did. Yeah, he dope for sure. Yeah, he's one of the people that understands it. You know, they get the market and they get it. Like, yeah, he. I I, I respect what he does for sure. Yeah, I, I've seen him. I saw him back in the days when I um used to mess with him, stuff like that. I used to follow him and see his stuff. But yeah, he's dope for sure. He's funny too. <laughs> oh man man i, I gotta uh, truly say man I, I truly appreciate your time today man man i appreciate you man appreciate what you're doing for your, your community we need more stuff like this i want to do more interviews and stuff like this so i appreciate you being the first one um i, I can say that you're the first interview i've ever did um uh, for sure so i appreciate you you know you know we as black people we I, we don't do it enough uh um, as far as generational wealth and what you're doing right now with the Admiral Club Exotics, do do you get your your kids involved with it? Because it's it's a business. It's you you're a CEO of a of, of a business. Man, I'm not gonna lie. I'm doing it all for my kids. Like I'm I'm buying properties and I'm for each one of my kids so they can have something when they get out of high school. 
some like you know saying building generational wealth, but um my kids they don't even they they see the dogs they look at them they've been around dogs so much their life throughout their life they don't really even pay attention to the dogs they so focusing what they doing playing PlayStation or on the tab but they love dogs like I do but right now nah but my son he he about to get old enough so I'm having to poop all that for sure but right now they they just too young so they don't really they not not too involved in it now now. When when someone gets gets a, a pup from Admiral Club Exotics, man, what can they expect? Because I before before you before you say it, man, because what got me, man, you you actually have someone who take the dogs personally to the people. Yeah, um, that's one of my things. Like I try to any way I can help my buddies make money. Um, that's my buddies, my flight manny, I came out with that man because they got the flight mannies. I see my flight manny. But yeah, that's my one of my buddies from high school, Jefflin Davis. He flies my dogs where I need them to, but um, it just depends. If I'm not busy, I love flying on myself. I put in that work like that. I like the people for people to meet because a lot of people they just want to meet me, and it's a blessing. They want to shake my hand and stuff like that. So um, I try to do it myself. But when they're getting a dog for me, um, you can expect it being healthy, top quality. You're gonna get what you want. You know, you're gonna get what you 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 pay for. The, Pay for something, you get it, and be like, "Hold on, it's not the same dog." Because I know that I see that happens a lot. But you're gonna get top quality for sure, and you're gonna get um, a friend and, and me for life for sure. Not, not, uh, what's the average cost for someone uh, getting a pup from Admiral Club Exotics? Does it depends on the breeding, the uh, the breeding pair? It really, just depends. Um, I, I've been blessed to like raise my price, um, but I, I say like. You you expect this for like ten thousand and up for sure. I think one time I was I was seeing on the post. I correct me if I'm wrong. Um, where uh, you were uh, helping a young young kid out. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that was one I, I um I helped somebody that wanted a, they wanted a Frenchie bad man, and it was off one of my it was off actually my best female, and there was a kid, and I ended up selling him the Frenchie for fifteen hundred. Um, it was a top. It was a top quality Frenchie. Um, I didn't have to do that, but like God put me in a like, God put me in a position to be able to make those decisions, you know. Think twice about it, but yeah, I sold him a um, it's a moth fly. I sold him a um, a Frenchie for fifteen hundred for sure. Yeah. All right, man. As as we're wrapping things up, man, what 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 would you like to see uh, Admiral Club Exotics in in the next couple of years, man? I still haven't, I haven't got that look I want. Like I have my, I got a lot of dope stuff, a lot of quality dogs, but I still haven't got that, that look I want. Um, I'm still trying to lock that in and work towards that and build a Maui line bigger. I want it to be, right now it's for sure one of the biggest, but I want it to be, I want to be the biggest. Uh, I'm not scared to say that. I don't, I don't do nothing to be second place like that. So I'm working, I'm battling myself. I'm not, you know, getting anybody else i'm not trying to outdo myself um so that's really what i want i want to keep inspiring people um and just and just be somebody that look up to and be like man he did i want to do that follow that blueprint because i want people to be better than me i want because i get it all the time people are like man you know the next generation of kids bro they see what you do they're gonna be crazy with what they do with the marketing so i want it to be like that and People to look back and be like, hey, he was the reason why people, you know, they really marketing serious. Uh, before we get off here, I'd be a liar if I said that I don't see, I don't notice that people, you know, they brand better. They, they they take it more serious since they see I came on the scene. They see how I operate and I, I really branded myself. I see people do all kinds of stuff that I did. It's helping their account, you know, so... I like to see stuff like that. I ain't no hater. I like to see do better and stuff like that. Oh, you, you know, I forgot to ask this, man. Do you see yourself uh, in the future having uh, uh, franchises, uh, people buying into Admiral Club Exotic as a franchise? Man, I've thought about that. I've had a, I, I see a few people doing that now. Um, I've thought about that. It's kind of tough, though. Um, I could, uh, I just, I don't know. It's like, I see it all the time, but it's, to me, it's like, 
it doesn't seem too organic how they have it set up right now. Like, yeah, you buying into this? Are you genuine? Like, are they? Like, what are the people buying into it? Like, what are they really gonna benefit? Like, besides, you know what I'm saying? Like, the like, breeder, that a lot of breeders like taking your money and stuff like that. So I've been seeing that. Um, maybe it can be something that can eventually come about or something like that. But right, now, I don't know. Like, I like to do. I don't like to split stuff too many ways and. I don't have to. I don't like to have to depend on a lot of other people right now because people can let you down and drop the ball. So I'm just depending on myself and the team that I got um, and stuff like that. How how proud is Moms of what you're doing right now? Hey man, she proud of me because I did a whole 360. Um, so she real proud of me. I'm proud of her because she did a 360 in her life also. It's good. So we proud of each other for sure. Hey, man, I, I want to say, man, I truly appreciate your time tonight, man. I'm glad I'm the first, too, man. <laughs> so I, I truly appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate you, too, man. We got to do it again for sure. Oh, definitely, man, for sure. Like, when you got anything in the future that, that you want to talk about uh, in your community, man, just let me know, man. I did definitely, man. For sure, man. I appreciate you, G. All right, man. There you have it. Justin right. Crawford, Admiral Club Exotics on Bully Talk with Zaya Pitts, man. I appreciate it. We All out. Right.